Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking you through my reading list for one of my modules for this year. So I'm taking my first English module that I'm going to be taking at university, it's Introduction to Gender and Sexuality Studies, and I've been sent the kind of preparatory reading list for it already, so I thought I'd do a little reading vlog. So I have my laptop here and I am going to have a look at what the books are because I haven't checked yet. <laughs> This module offers an introduction to key issues in gender and sexuality studies. It's not a module about feminism per se, nor does it provide a history of the women's rights movement or women's writing. Instead, it uses a mix of feminist, queer and post-colonial theory and philosophy, written primarily in Britain and Northern America, to read a variety of modern and contemporary literature and visual texts, written from a range of gendered identities. We will discuss how gender and sexuality are significant themes in a variety of cultural forms, but primarily our classes will integrate how texts represent, challenge, complicate, and in some cases reinforce simplistic notions of our bodies and sexual lives. Which sounds right up my street. <laughs> our approach to gender and sexuality studies is non-binary, decolonial, anti-racist and intersectional. So it looks like there's a resource list, which is a much more in-depth kind of week-by-week -week reading. Um, and then there's some preparatory reading that is kind of suggested you do before the start of term. So it's the preparatory reading that I will be doing on this one. Okay, so for semester one, uh, before I need to read and listen to the following text in full. Uh, Feminism Interrupted by Lola Olufemi. Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl by Andrea Lawler. Meridian by Alice Walker. Um, Serious Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu, uh, Decolonising Trans Slash Gender 101 by Binohan, B. Binohan. And it also says if you're looking to buy one of these books, it links you to the publisher's website, which is a small independent radical press. So that's really cool. Like <laughs> the people who run this module want to support independent bookshops, and I stand that. <laughs> I haven't actually heard of any of the books that we're going to be reading, which is really good, I think, because it shows that it's far more diverse than the kind of normal boring stuff that you'd well it's not boring but the normal stuff that you'd expect to get on a gender and sexuality module um it shows that they're trying to push the boundaries a bit more I think I'm excited to get started I guess <laughs> the first thing I need to do is to get my hands on these five books I don't know how easy it will be but that's today's task so I've just ordered all of the books um I try to get as many books as I can secondhand because I think it's just good for the planet and the ones that I don't get secondhand, I have bought from independent publishers, uh, which is really cool because I've actually discovered a few. So I got one of them from Pluto Press, which are a radical political publishing house that were founded in like 1969 and are still going. And I've also subscribed to their newsletter because it looks like they have really cool books. And I also managed to get 50% off on my first order. Uh, so it wasn't even that much more expensive than buying like a secondhand book, which was great. Uh, another book which I got new I got from the Saint Bookstore. Um, I used a website called biblio.co.uk. I've never used it before but it seemed like they had loads of um, independent bookshops that you could buy from from that website so that might be a good place to look if you want to support some independent bookstores. And the rest of them I got from Abe Books which do a lot of secondhand uh, book selling on uh, which I used before for my books for last term. So they should all be here in a few weeks, I guess, and then I'll be able to begin reading. <laughs> Two of the books have just arrived, which is so exciting. It's like 30 degrees outside, if not more. I'm so excited to just sit down and read a book for the rest of the day. So the ones that came are uh, Feminism Interrupted by um, Lola Ulafemi, uh, which is the one that I bought brand new from the publishers, and Serious Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu. And I didn't actually realise when I bought it, I couldn't tell, but like, if you can see that cover. Uh, so this one is kind of the central core text of, I think, what we're doing in Tam 1. So I think it would make sense to read this one first before I then go through all the others, because also this is a bit more like non-fiction y, whereas I think this one is more of a fiction book. So once I've read this one, I should have an idea of like the themes I'm looking out for and what to look for in the more literature based texts. Right, it's been a while, okay? I got a little bit distracted by life, but I have finished Feminism Interrupted. This was really, really good. It was kind of like an introduction to feminism, I'd say, or an overview of the key points of feminist theory, but very much from an actual 
revolutionary radical standpoint of feminism, kind of what feminism should be today, rather than the white feminism that a lot of other books present. Because I've read a lot of intros to feminism and books which are kind of aimed at the mass market for feminism. And they don't really do the key issues justice, in fact they rarely mention them at all, whereas this kind of goes through chapter by chapter a lot of the key issues surrounding feminism at the moment, so for example sex work or abolition of prisons or I think there's one of a few, there's lots. <laughs> but also what I found really good about this book is I actually did find it in places not challenging because I did agree with everything that's in it, but it really pushed against some of the more ingrained stuff that I've been taught to believe growing up and I think that's actually really healthy and it's a sign that it is a good book about feminism because it shouldn't be easy to read, it should be challenging you and making you question what's ingrained in, within your beliefs. So great book, absolute great book, would actually probably now this would be my recommendation for people who are interested in feminism and want to read more because I think it takes you a step deeper, it takes you beyond that surface level kind of white corporate capitalist feminism. But whilst I was reading that all of the books arrived, so I now have all the books I need to read. Um, I've literally about a chapter into this at the moment, I haven't really read any further, but this is going to be my next target to push through. It's um, so it's Meridian by Alice Walker and it is a fiction book, I believe. It's kind of started by her going and standing in front of a tank. Um, I'm <laughs> that's, that's as far as we've got, um, but I really want to push through this because I think once I've got back into the swing of it, I'll be able to get through these other three a lot quicker. So yes, progress is being made, slowly. Grind your heels into the sheets Grit your teeth and get some sleep this evening Counting sheep So we are making progress on Meridian by Alice Walker. Um, I think I have about 50 pages left to go. Yeah, I'm on 180 and there's about 100, 230 in here. Um, so the task for today is to see if I can get to the end of this. I'm getting really, really into it now. This book is great. And I've got some Earl Grey tea because slowly I'm becoming a person who drinks Earl Grey. Apparently I love it. It's been raining outside. It's the perfect reading day. Fraying at the seams. Brightest colors. Muted light. Let's say goodnight. Say goodnight. Well, hello there. I've got some good news for you. We have finished Meridian by Alice Walker and now I've finished it I can give a little bit more of an insight into what it was about because I wasn't really sure when I started. Uh, so it's about a woman called Meridian Hill and it's set kind of I think pre the 60s but through the 60s and further through in the south of America and it's a lot about the civil rights movement but focusing more on individuals. And I say it very much themes around race and class and how those are navigated and how those affect the people in the movement and also their relationships between each other throughout the years. It's, it's not as obvious as that might sound in terms of discussing those themes. I think they're actually quite well hidden within it. Um, and it also has quite a complex narrative structure. Like I definitely have to reread it. The writing is really good. But it's clearly very, um, oh my god, it's been too long since I did English Lit. It's very symbolic. <laughs> like, there's a lot of symbolism within this. Um, and I definitely would want to reread it to kind of fully understand that, because I'm sure some of it is brought up earlier than you first realise. Um, and it definitely jumps a lot around in perspective and narrative voice and things like that. So it's quite a complex novel. But I think it really gives you a lot and you probably get a lot, a lot out of it on second or third reading. So I'm excited to come back to this one again. And, sorry I've left it so long, but 
I'm almost halfway through this one too. This is Serious Blooms at Night by Shiny Beauty. I am loving this. It's so readable and so accessible. Not accessible as in the writing, that doesn't mean the writing is any less good or the book is any less worthy. It just reads really nicely and really easily and is quite a nice contrast to Meridian. So this one is sort of a mystery. I don't really know if it's a crime mystery yet, but you jump around in time a lot as well. So you kind of start at the beginning, seeing the sort of outcome of the story and jump back to the beginning and they're, they're sort of meeting in the middle, but you like, it's really exciting. You want to know what happens in the middle. And it also deals, this one is a lot about gender and sexuality, I think, but also again, has that race and class themes within it. <laughs> Good old British colonialism is, <laughs> Once again, we're shown to be absolute assholes in this, which is good because we need more representation talking about how bad we were. But I am really enjoying the characters, really enjoying the story and really enjoying this edition. I don't know if I can find it, but it's got... A... So the chapters each begin with like a little bug. I'd be really intrigued to know whether that's the same for all of the copies of this book, because if so, that's <laughs> definitely something of note. And also I'm excited for the, I feel like something is gonna happen with the serious boobs at night because basically there's this flower that only flowers once and it's in the night time and the flower hasn't flowered yet. And I'm like, what is gonna happen when the flower flowers? <laughs> and that is also pushing me towards the end. Uh, so I will be <laughs> either very, very upset or very, very excited when I come back to you at the end. Uh, because if the flower doesn't bloom, I'm, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm never going to be able to live again. No, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but as you can tell, I'm finding this book. I was going to say a lot of fun, that's probably not the right word because it's quite serious um, as well, but I'm enjoying it. It's an enjoyable read. <laughs> I finished all of Sarah's Blooms at Night. This book, oh, it was amazing. I also really liked the ending. The ending was like not completely satisfying, but in a way that was fully satisfying because it would have just been so unrealistic to wrap all of the ties up. And it's like, honestly, the story that they were telling in real life, you don't, you don't get neat endings, you know? Like stuff isn't always neat, but it tied up enough of the key points for it to be really, really interesting and the way it converged on a single moment. I loved. I know I was making a huge deal of the flower thing and the flower thing, like, yeah, it happened. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know what it meant. <laughs> I need to think about what it meant, I think, because I'm sure it did mean something, but you know, we live and we learn, or we live and we don't learn, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, this book is amazing. I would very, very highly recommend. It's a really easy read, really interesting, kind of covers a lot of gen genders, covers a lot of genres. Uh, so probably no matter what you're into, it's quite likely that you'll enjoy this. And throwing that on aside, I am now reading uh, Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl by Andrea Taylor. I actually began to start the other one. I can't remember what the last book is called, but then I picked up this just because 
I wanted something fiction to read whilst I was like in the bath and this one is stuck because this book is so readable. It's one of those books that has really really short sections. I mean some of them get a bit longer but it's got all of these tiny X's in between chapters um, which split it up and make it really easy to read and also the premise is just really fun. So it's like it starts with him literally molding his body into a different shape. I'm using pronouns he because that's what they're using in the book at the moment. I don't know if that'll change. Um, but oh my god, <laughs> it says one of these. Yeah, it says sexy, outrageous, and completely funny at the top. This book <laughs> is sexy. <laughs> like no joke. I'm pretty sure it has sex about every page and a half, and I'm on page like ninety. So like do the math that's a lot of sex <laughs> it's great but like oh my god I've never read something with this much sex in it before but I'm really enjoying it I bloody love this cover I I don't even know like it's a cover that you couldn't even predict you were gonna love but the colours the like, diagonal thing the photo the pink it's great <laughs> So I'm, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm powering through this, but I'm making quick progress through this one as well. This is also the most uh, recently published book out of the ones I'm reading for this. And I think it does show, like, it feels more, like it's pushing more boundaries and is a bit more, like it feels more contemporary. I also don't know if that's just because it's set more contemporary because it's set in 19, the 1990s. But yeah, it's really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> I'm enjoying and I will talk to you again when I'm a bit further in. Under speaking fans and tangled sheets unwoven Fraying at the scene finished all of these books they are done that's it I'm ready for term to start bring it on <laughs> I mean term's gonna be crazy but at least I've done this preparation the final book I read was Decolonizing Transgender 101 by B. Benoen and this book was it's basically written in response to another book which is Trans Transgender 101 which is written by a trans male white man and this is this is a, a response to that and a critique of that presentation of what it means to be transgender and trying to unpick it a bit and what's really interesting about this book is it has punctuation but it's not used in traditional ways and they it's mentioned in the introduction that this is done deliberately in part and they haven't gone through and corrected everything and it also has multiple voices because it has voices of people who are sort of reading it almost as if editors in the footnotes and you can see their perspective on the thing issues. I would say <laughs> this is like written to try and critique this transgender 101 is like too simplistic but actually I think some of the items in this are really complex and I definitely didn't understand everything in this book first time around especially the big more like theoretical ideas. I don't actually know how accessible it is because for me the lack of formal editing was I found it more of a barrier than some of the like way they claim academic stuff is and I don't know if that's just because that's the kind of way I've been socialised but I, I'm excited to discuss this because I feel like I need a more structured environment to be able to unpack this a bit more and be able to critique it in a bit more of a structured way because I feel at the moment I don't know how I feel about it and I don't know how to articulate it in ways that doesn't disrespect what this book is because I really value the premise of it and I think that's really important but I don't necessarily know how effective it is in achieving what it wants to. Overall I think these books have really opened my eyes and they really led me onto other trains of thought in terms of what I want to read and where I want to go so I might continue to document that but I really love being given books to read because I discover stuff that I wouldn't necessarily normally pick up anyway or I would actually pick up and read but just haven't been a priority and this enables me to prioritise them in a way that I haven't before. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, I've definitely enjoyed documenting it and even though it's been a while in the making because I haven't read these as quickly as I could have, uh, I've still 
really enjoyed reading them. And I can't wait to study them. <laughs> Let's say goodnight. Let's say